Father, we bless you this morning, Jesus, unchangeable God. You are awesome, oh God. You are unchangeable. You are unstoppable, Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you this morning. Lord, I lift up your name because you are unchangeable, oh God. You are unstoppable, Jesus. You are unchangeable, Jesus. Lord, I bless your name this morning, oh God. I lift up your holy name this morning, Jesus. Holy Spirit, saturate this place this morning with your presence, oh God. Let every life, oh God, be transformed this morning by the power of your word, oh God. Because your word is life, your word gives understanding, God, to the simple Jesus. Father, I lift up your holy name this morning. I lift up your holy name this morning. Holy Spirit, be exalted in the lives of your people this morning. Lord, be thou glorified this morning, O God, my shantori, I can tell it, God bless you this morning, saints of the Most High God. The Lord bless you this morning. The Lord keep you. The Lord strengthen you. Welcome to another beautiful day the Lord has made. The Bible says this is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a brand new day. A brand new morning. What an awesome God we serve. The Lord bless you. Please invite somebody. Please share this video because you never know who don't know Jesus. You never know who needs a word from the Lord. You never know who needs a sense of direction. So please share this video because Jesus is interested in the lives of his people. The Lord bless you this morning once more time. The Lord keep you. Welcome to Sunday morning. We gave God praise for what the Lord did on Friday night. If you got healed, to God be the glory. Because I know God did wonders in the lives of his people. Please walk in divine healing. Know that health is your kingdom right. I pray that God will make you hold. Remember wholeness is healings are the bread for the children of God. So enjoy his presence. Take care of your body. Do not go back to anything that is wrong. The Lord will see you through. Hallelujah. Wherever you are this morning, the eyes you now just begin to create an atmosphere of worship. Begin to bless the name of Jesus. Give God praise for who he is to you. The fire you were alive this morning indicates that God is faithful. Hallelujah. If God will have you to go to the hospital this morning, and see people who wish they could raise up their hands and say thank you, Jesus. Others wish they could just get up from their bed and say thank you, Jesus. But the fact this morning you are in your right and sound mind lets me know that God is good. So no matter what your night may have been or what the weekend may have been, I encourage you this morning to give your maker praise, give him thanks for everything. Because God is faithful. You're being alive this morning in any case, his faithfulness. So just begin to bless his name this morning. Father, we bless you because you are great, oh God. We thank you for life this morning. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness, oh God. Father, we thank you. We have eyes, oh God, we can see. We have ears, oh God, we can hear. We have mouth, oh God, we can speak. We have feet, oh God, we can move. Father, we bless your name this morning. Because great is your faithfulness. We thank you, Jesus. Lord God, I saturate this Facebook life this morning with the blood of Jesus. I call upon divine help this morning, oh God.
Father, let your word go forth this morning in the lives of your people. Set the captives free this morning. Bring souls this morning on their knees to you, O oh God. Redirect the step of someone this morning. Give someone encouragement this morning. Give someone direction this morning. Let your word, O oh God, destroy the yokes of the enemy. Let your word set the captives free this morning. Let someone be freed, O oh God. Ah, because when your word says, oh God, your word is life. Your word is life. Your word is life. Let your word come alive this morning. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, I salute your awesome presence this morning. Exalt Jesus this morning, Holy Spirit. Exalt Jesus this morning. Holy Ghost, exalt Jesus this morning because you are too good. Hallelujah. Well, saints of God, God bless you once more time this morning. Thank you for tuning in again. Share this video because you never know what God wants to do in the life of a person. Hallelujah. It is Sunday morning. It is when you hear the preaching, the word of God. You know, because of the assignment upon our lives, the assignment God has given us, my, uh, the men of God and myself, Prophet Paul, we said, is heaven. Whenever you want to set people free, it takes the grace of God. It takes the boldness of God. God has called us to prepare the bride for his coming. God has called us to bring souls into his kingdom. We are called to depopulate hell and populate heaven. We are called to bring fulfillment to lives. We are called to sanitize the church and redirect God's people back to him. A great assignment. Hallelujah. So over the weekend, looking at what God did on Friday night, waiting on God because of the assignment, I don't just come and preach what I want to preach. I, I hear from the word of the God. The word I hear from the Lord, what he wants me to declare to his people. And if you are a preacher, listen to me this morning. That should be your job. Don't just preach anything. Learn to hear what the Lord wants to speak to his people. Because God knows the needs. God knows what is needed in the lives of his people. So over the night, I was just thinking, God, what do you want me to minister on? I had so many things. And then this morning while in prayer, I heard the Lord say that, I change shed not. I change not. I am sure of my promises. Get your house a other. Let's turn our Bibles to Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 to 7. Since of the most high God, we serve a faithful God. God is a good God. Your being alive this morning indicates the goodness of God. The God we serve, the God almighty we serve, he is a faithful God. He never lies. No, he's true to his word. So God says this morning, get your house in order because he is faithful to his promises. Let's turn our Bibles to Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 to 7. The Bible says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Hallelujah. Therefore, you are not consumed, all sons of Jacob. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you who are not consumed, all sons of Jacob. God was speaking to the children of Israel. But this morning, God is speaking to you and I. Because the Bible is written to all generations. Hallelujah. It penetrates the hearts of people. Since of God, God has not changed. God is faithful to his word. Whatever you have been believing God for, God will do it for you. The fault is not happening doesn't mean that God doesn't exist. Or doesn't mean that God won't do it. God is a good God. You can hold on to his word. If God says he loves you, God means it. You may be this morning have gone through abuse, different issues of life. Have no one have accepted you for who you are. But God have accepted you. Because God created you in his image. And God cares about you. 
And God said he loves you. Somebody, God says he loves you. Don't love for the love of men out there. Love for the love of God. Because the love of God is everlasting. Hallelujah. Men come and men go. People come, people go. People make promises and they do not stand by the word. But this God we said, Jehovah God, his word is consistent. He said, God of integrity. I don't know your need this morning. I don't know what the, this new year has brought to you. I don't know the issues you are battling with in life. But this morning, God says to you, he changes not. Whatever God has promised you concerning your life, it will come to pass. Hallelujah. Whatever God has promised you in your life will come to pass. Because God is a faithful God. He never lies. He never lies. He is faithful. So I encourage you to hold on to the word of God. Because the word of God is life. You can take God's word to the bank and come back with a result. That's the God we serve. So God says to us this morning that I change us not. For a seven. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone from my lords and have not kept them. Return to me. Oh, I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. These were the children of Israel. These were people who experienced the oneness of God. They saw that God parted the Red Sea. They saw that God killed the Egyptians. They saw how God brought down manna from heaven. But yesterday, they came to a place to disobey God and turn from God. But yesterday, God being a loving God, God began to call them back to himself. And said, return back to me, all sons of Jacob. Return from your wicked ways and see my promises for your life. I don't know about you. God has done too much for you. To come this far to doubt the integrity of God. God, the fact this morning, you didn't wake yourself up. God woke you up. Your alarm clock did not wake you up. God woke you up. There are some things you went through. All us went through, they died. But God spared your life. God is saying this morning, get your house in order. Get your life in order. Saints of God, Jesus Christ is coming. This may sound, I understand, because of this 21st century, people tried to minimize this, this statement. The thing because it's a repetition. But the fact remains that Jesus Christ is coming back. And Jesus Christ is coming back for a ready prepared church. Hallelujah. He's coming back for you and I. But my question is this morning. Is your house in order? Are you still, if you are own believer listening to me this morning? And you are still doubting that, is there a God? Yes, there is a God. Or maybe you are a believer who have accepted Jesus Christ. And you, are, you have some doubts about the living God. I come to let you know there is a God. Hallelujah. You know, a uh, few weeks ago, about some time ago, I heard a story about this comedian. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this comedian and the professor, and I'm saying this to you only because God says when I was praying this morning, God said there are some people who are still doubting the existence of God. All others think they just accept it, but because they have been hearing for many years that Jesus is coming and he has not shown up. So they still have some doubts. So God wants to let us know that his coming is at hand. The clock is about to turn. Hallelujah. The clock is about to turn. If Jesus do not meet you on the earth, it's two ways. You may be either caught up with Jesus in death. That lets me know since of God, unbelievers, ladies and gentlemen, that you have to take life very serious. You have to run love with such an urgency to know that this life is not to be played with. You have to live every day like you are ready. 
if if I come, if I could see you this morning, like in a building, and I see that, are you ready to die? Nobody will tell me they are ready. No, nobody will tell me. Because if we know when we are going to die, we are prepared. Even the ones I say they don't know God, they were prepared. What am I saying? Do not take life for granted. God is real. So if you are unbeliever this morning, listen to me. And you are still doubting whether there's a God. There is a God. You know, so there's, I mean, so there's professor and this comedian. He saw the guy, he said, well, Emmanuel, God bless you. I heard about your YouTube award. And he said, and she said, oh, it is God, oh, it is God who have done it. This comedian was giving God's praise for what God have done in his life. And then this professor who claimed to be everything said that there is no God. Why is God? And the comedian said that God is up there. God is in the heavens. He said, no, there is no God. He said, science have proven anything you do not see or touch does not exist. So that means there is no God. And the little girl looked at him and said that, Professor, do you see your sins? He said, no. He said, how do you know that there is no God? He said, uh-uh, science tells me. And the little boy said, well, if you do not see your senses, then you don't have any sense. And he was like, okay. What am I saying this morning to us? Those of you who are still wondering what are this or God that lives. One thing I know about every one of us, because according to the Bible, when God created mankind, the Bible said God breathed, God breathed into man, a man became a living soul. The last me know we carry the image of God. And no matter who you are, you may be an atheist and say, well, I don't believe in anything. There is an image of God in you. Something tells you there is a God that lays above. There is a God that exists. You cannot doubt that. You may not know how to connect to that God. But this morning I come to announce to you that the way to that God, the only way to that God is only through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There is no other way except Jesus. There is a God. There is a God. To not doubt it. If you have been saved, and you still doubting the, the existence of God. There is a God. I beg you all. Please do not mind. Do not mind what science is saying. Do not mind evolution. Do not mind an answer. No. We were created in the image of God. You are not an animal. No, you are not. The Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. You are of God. You are beautiful. You are wonderful. You are fearful. Because you have God's image in you. Wake up every morning and know you are somebody. You, are, you, you didn't just fall down from the sky. I come to encourage us this morning. God says, get your house in order. Turn from your wicked ways. Whatever you are doing, do not have explained to you that there is a God. Because the Bible says only a fool says in his heart there is no God. And there is a God we have to give account to. Like I always say, accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it is not all to it. You have a life to live. And God will help us. There is a God. And God is saying, return from your wicked ways. Sometimes when, we, when you hear wicked, when you only think about those who are bad, who kill and stuff. What is in your life that you know this morning that is hindering you? In your work with God. That may be doubt. Unbelief. Unbelief. I will preach a message that coming up. Unbelief the head is sin. Unbelief is one of the sins. That no one sees. Hallelujah. You doubt God abilities. You doubt the assistance of God. You disbelieve that God can heal you. You disbelieve that God can make a way for you. Unbelief. God said, return and get your house in order. Get your life in order. Because what? His, his promises are sure. Don't be trapped by the things of this world. You cannot be a Christian. And you are still walking in anger. No. That is wrong. 
The Bible said, be angry, but do not sin. That means get angry, but don't let that control you for days. Because when you do that, the enemy takes that and uses that against you. And whenever there is anger in you, you don't have God. The Holy Ghost becomes silent. Return from your wicked ways. You are a Christian or whoever you are this morning listening to me. You are saved by the way of unforgiveness. And God is saying forgive. I have forgiven you. Then why hold on to somebody else's problem and cannot let go? Get your house in order. Hallelujah. The devil is not good. It is he that keeps us in bondages. But this morning, the word of God has come to help us to know that, you know what? You can do it right. He said, return, O house of Jacob, return, O sins of the most high God. Jesus Christ is coming. And when he comes, he wants to make sure your house is clean. He wants to, he, he wants to make sure your life is in order. Christianity is not a play, yo. It's not a joke. It's not just going to church in the morning on Sunday morning and come back home and wear a nice clothes. It's more than that. It is a life that you have to live, a diligent life that you have to live. It's a life of diligence, a life of consistency, a life of sacrifice. Get your house in order. He said, turn from your wicked ways. Turn from your sins. You know, the, I mean, the church, our job, as a pastor, our job, it's not the only encourage you. Encouragement is part of the work. But the main thing the church is for is to bring instructions. The church is to bring correction. It's to bring direction in your life. It's to help you. Because the goal of this world, Satan, is basic and wants to destroy your life. And if you are not strong in God, he can defeat you. Even though Jesus Christ has given you victory to overcome sin, to overcome the devil, but if you stay in the camp of the enemy, you will be defeated. What can darkness do with light? No, it's two different things. And the God we serve, he's a God of light. So you cannot be in the darkness and claim to be a Christian. No. That's an abomination. And many people are trapped. God says, many of his children claim to be in the light, but they are still in darkness. If you don't know the Lord this morning, my sister, my brother, there is a God that exists. And that God is interested in you. Sin is the darkness. Sin will keep you in bondage. And God is saying this morning, get your life in order. Come to me. I am here to help you. I want to set you free from the hands of the enemy. Whenever you see yourself down in sin, that's the work of the devil. He wants to keep you down and depressed. He wants you to be like him. He wants you to end up in hell. But this morning, delivery has come in the name of Jesus. The Lord will set us free. Get your house in order. Return from disobedience to obedience. God to Abraham. And God gave Abraham an instruction. And because of obedience, the Lord blessing. Today, we are blessings. We are what? We are, uh, because of that today, we are all partakers of that blessing. Because Abraham obeyed the Lord. And this morning, God is saying that, come by to a life of obedience. Hallelujah. Come by to the life of obedience. Do not disobey God in anything. Whenever you go away from the word of God, you are disobeying God. And that's what the children of Israel did. And God began to call them back to himself. And this morning, my sister, my brother, God is calling you back from disobedient. Anything you think, it is not of God. And you are doing, is disobedient. But the Lord God will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. If you are on the line, if you are listening this morning, 
and you have an idol as your God. You got it all wrong. You know, there is a song that uh, one of the singers sang about God alone. He says, the God we serve, his God alone. Nobody created God. This God does not depend on any mortal man. This God does not need anything from us. That's just the way it is. What am I saying this morning? You may have an arrow in your life and you think it's God. Can your idol save you? No! You have to make food for your idol. You have to go and find a place for your idol to sleep. You have to wash over your idol. Come on. I don't want to serve that kind of God. No! I don't want to. I want to serve a God who is dependable. A God who can take care of me. A God who loves me. A God who can provide for me. A God who when I call upon, he will answer me. A God in him that lives in me, I can move and have my being. That's the God I want to serve. Please, it is time to put that way idols. Buddha can save you. The Chinese God can save you. The new age can save you. Only Jesus. Jesus is real. It's not because I read it in the Bible. Jesus Christ appeared in my home. Jesus Christ is very alive. Jesus Christ is very alive. And he's calling you this morning to him. He's saying, live that life of disobedient. If you refuse to turn to God, you are living in disobedient. And I come this morning to encourage you to come out of disobedient. Because the God we serve, he is a good God. He's alive. He's not dead. Go to Israel. He's not dead. He's alive. Ha, Go to Israel. You will see the empty grave. It is not of fake things. No, he's real. So I beg you this morning, turn to God. The next thing God said, get your house in order. Learn to reference God. Learn to fear God. One of the things in the 21st century that is missing is the fear of God. Many have lost the fear of God. Many have lost the fear of God. Even those who claim to be Christians have lost the fear of God. This morning as you give your life to Christ, my sister, my brother, please reference God. The God we serve, he is a holy, righteous God. The God we serve, he is all powerful. He is all knowing. God is calling us back to the fear of him. You may be listening to me this morning or you will listen. And maybe you are a priest and worshiper. Last night, you came from life from a bed of fornication. And this morning, you have the ghost to take the mark and say, so you think you sing to God. Please. Please, in the name of grace. No, that is bondage. Because you should fear God. When you sin, you should fear and say, God, I need help. You continue your lifestyle the whole week in sexual sin, fornication, adultery, gossiping. And then Sunday morning, you pack your clothes. Because I won't say you pack yourself. You take your Bible and you say you're going to worship God. No sense or remorse. No. I'm not saying you should condemn yourself. I'm not saying that grace is not available. But my thing here is to not take grace for granted. Do not abuse grace. Grace is strength. Grace does not give you the license to live in continuous sin. Don't do that. Get your house in order. Because you never know when the Lord is going to knock at your door. The breath you have this morning, you cannot control yourself. The Lord God can call you on this minute. And what will you say, God? I was playing church. Oh, God, I don't know you. No. 
This morning, God said, return to the field of the Lord, people. And it's time to come back to fearing God. You are in church this morning, press a worshiper or a believer. You are in church. You on your phone. One of the things I have become idol is this phone. We in church. We all on the phone. Hallelujah. You in the building this morning. You all distracted on Facebook Live. You say you're worshiping God. No, 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 no. You either do it for God or you don't. God is saying this thing has become our idol this 21st century. It is time. Technology is good. It's good. That's what I can set in my home. You can be in your home and hear the word of God. But what am I saying? If it is time to worship God, put aside your phone. Because the God we serve needs to be reverent, my people. He's such a good God. You cannot serve him so cheap. No. You in church, you test it. How will you get the word of God? You say you're worshiping God. You're on Facebook Live. You're doing. Come on, God is not there. Let me say this to us. There are many churches. God is no more there. It's only flesh. I'm serious. The lens they have gone off in many churches because of the lack of fear of the Lord. The Holy God are less in you and less in me. Oh my God, He can be grieved. One thing I know, when he comes, you know. But when he leaves you, you don't know. God is saying this, many of my people, get your house in order. Get your church in order. If you are a pastor this morning, somebody can say something. Because if not, many of their sins will be deceived and end up in hell. If no one speaks, Many own believers will not come to God only because of the attitude of the men and the women of God. And I'm not here to condemn no one this morning. I'm breaking the undiluted word. You cannot be a pastor and be selfish. No. You cannot be a pastor. And then last night, you came from adultery bed, fornication bed, and become your lifestyle. Then you come in the morning and take the mark and say in the name of grace. Oh no, no, you are in bondage. It is time to turn to God in righteousness. It is time to, oh my God, little about shall fear the Lord. You cannot be a man of God and play in sin. How can you lead God's people? Then you mind what they are not being transformed. Check your life. What are you doing with them? What do you do from Monday to Saturday? What do you do? You are a pastor, you're working in unforgiveness. That is wrong. Don't do that. Again, you are a man of God. Hallelujah. Don't do that. You are a pastor. You are abusing God's people. You won't tell them the truth and you're eating their money. Someone could have said something. Because if this does not stop many lies, many won't come to the Lord because why they have been betrayed by false prophets. Someone, and since if you are listening this morning to me, it is time to open up your eyes. Because we are in the last days. And there are so many fake pastors and fake prophets and fake preachers. I'm going to say this morning, as God gave it to me, it is time to expose, to expose the deeds of the enemy. Hallelujah. You are abusing God's people. So using their money. I'm not saying that don't spend money or don't use money. But what's your game? What, I mean, you don't love them. You don't care about their soul, about their salvation. The things that matter to God does not matter to you. All you want to do is to build your own empire. And God's people are dying every day, coming to hell in the name of grace, in the name of motivation. Don't do that, pastor. God is saying this morning, get your church in order. Get your life in order. That's the word of God this morning to you. Turn. Turn from pride. You too pompous. Nobody can come close to you. The people God gave you. God says, sir, my people lead them. You cannot share what you have. You too full of yourself. People wash out. Any man or woman of God who's operating his pride is not of the Lord. Because Jesus Christ, the Bible says, he was loaded, he was meek. 
He could talk to anybody. He could talk to anyone. Humble men of God. That's the Jesus we serve. But these days, the men of God, you cannot come close to them. You cannot talk because they are too big and pompous. God is saying this morning, return from your wicked ways. You are pastor, you refuse to preach the truth. You got gay and lesbians in your church. You got fornicators in your church. You got adulterers in your church. You got drunkards in your church. And you refuse to tell them the truth. And you see mercy. Mercy hand. You feel the real loss. The God we serve, he's a God of love. And he's a God of judgment. The source of God's people is dying. What are you doing? The next meaning, how sure are you that lesbian if he or she does not repent? I don't care what America say. They can approve it. I don't care. I go by what the word say. The Bible says, when God created the heaven and the earth, God made a, man and a, a male and a female. God did not make two men. God did not make two women. No. That's the trick of the enemy to destroy God's people. Hallelujah. I'm not saying condemn them. I'm not saying kick them from the church. No. If you love their souls, you will get on your knees and pray for them. Tell them the truth. Deliver them from that lifestyle. But don't encourage them in their sin. You don't love them. You hate their soul. Because the next minute God called them home, they are going to hell. It's just fat. Hallelujah. You have a choir, choir master in fornication, adultery. You don't want to tell anything. And you teach a school. God is saying this morning to the body of Christ. And to everyone, turn from your wicked ways. And put your house, your church in order. Because Jesus Christ is coming back. And he's coming. He's coming back for the righteous, holy, ready, prepared church. Are you ready when the Lord comes? People of God. God, let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 to 9. Then you will understand what God is saying this morning to us. God is faithful to his promises. He God is faithful to his promises. The fact that God is wasting time to come. It's because he's giving us chance to repent. And don't take that chance for granted. Do not play with that and think that God won't come. And say, oh, well, since I was born, I've been hearing say Jesus is coming. And he's not here yet. Oh, yeah, Jesus is coming. He can come right now as we speak. He can take your life right now as we speak. So the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 to 9, we are about to be done soon in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, first what? For it says to nine. Let me just go back. Listen carefully to the word of God this morning. To let you know that God is not slack concerning his promises. Whatever God said he would do, he will do. If God said let holy, because he want a holy church, he miss it. If God said I love you, he miss it. If God said be strong in me and in the power of my might, he miss it. If God said you are healed, believe it. Hallelujah. If God said wait on me and let me perform my wonders in your life, he miss it. God is not slack concerning his promises. So you will preachers. All believers who refuse to witness and tell people about Jesus, God will hold you accountable. The best thing you can give anybody is Jesus. Because you know what? When we die, it's two destinations. And the fire means, like I said, the church is not where you go every Sunday, they pamper you. No. You should go to church on a Sunday morning and leave with a mind transformed. And know that God this week, all of my steps. And say, God, this week I need your guidance. Because I need to walk this life. 
Like I said, we got a devil who was against us. We are in a battle. Even you unbelievers. The reason why you have been doubting God over and over is because the enemy wants your life. But this morning, God has sent you on a broadcast to transform your life. There is a God. Okay? He is real. Hallelujah. He's real. So I will begin to read from verse 3. He said, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days. And that's what I preach about the first prophet today. So you will notice that everyone will say they are pastor. You should run behind it. Learn to test the spirit. They are genuine men of God who have God has been called. And they are fake ones. And the fake one does not care about your soul. They will not tell you the truth. All they want is your money. But because you don't discern the spirit, but because you refuse to test the spirit, that's why you have been duped. But this morning, the Lord God will open your eyes in the name of Jesus. Peter said, know this. In the last days, scoffers will come. Walking in according to lust. That's why I described this morning. You are pastor or the prophet, whoever you are. And you are playing in sin. And in the morning, you take your Bible. Please don't play with Jesus' name, people. Please. Jesus is precious. Jesus is the holy God. Don't you know? And that, that's why I, yesterday morning, the man of God called me and said, baby, um, I'm beginning to see something about, he was really, because he's a prophet. And I believe he will come and pray this morning for us. He said, there's something I begin to understand from the Bible. They call it unsanctified mercy. How the hey, where you got this from? He said, there are some things that God has condemned. And there are some pastors and some people who want to show mercy. Like I said this morning, don't buy lifestyle. God said it's wrong. And you are pampering it. Unsanctified mercy. Who are you to add to the word of God? When God says it's wrong, it's wrong. You cannot add. No, you cannot. You cannot. You cannot. Don't do that. God is washing from above. So open your eyes, people. We are in the last days. I am here with on an assignment to sanitize the church, to expose and remove the false prophets. And one of the things that, that is so bad these days for which many don't want to come to God is because the lifestyle of some ministers. I'm not saying to be rich is wrong. By the grace of God, I'm living a good life. My thing is, if the Lazara lifestyle, having 20 cars, 10 airplanes, if it becomes the issue of the day, you got it all wrong. If you got to get 10 micro, I mean 10 Mercedes Benz in your house, if it's the reason why you want to be a pastor, you got it all wrong. No! That's how many get discouraged. If they don't have money, they won't come to church. Or something, when they come, you will take that money. Because there are some false prophets who are using the name of God to accomplish the evil desires. But this morning, I expose them. Cause people's eyes will be open. I'm not saying don't enjoy your, I mean God. But be careful. You have a church. They got poor people in there. And you have 10 macro, I mean Mercedes based in your house. You can't help the poor. People in Africa suffering over the world. You cannot help them. And you want to say you're preaching God's word? Please, I beg you. It is time for prophets. It is time to repent. God says, get your house in order. Get your life in order. Because of that, these days, you can't tell the true prophets. Because they don't have what the other people don't have. So when they don't have a big name, you will not go to their church. Don't do that. Don't follow names. Because there are some people, there are some ministry where God is not dead anymore. It just theme. My luck taught about shut up. There are some places God is not there. God, that's why you, you need to open your eyes. These things are real. Because the worst place to be is to be in church and end up in hell. Only because you follow the wrong pastor. But this morning, God will open your eyes to see in the name of Jesus. It doesn't mean because Somehow, 10,000 members 
it means God is there. No. Or because they got two men, it means God is not there. Most of the place God is in is the small places. I'm serious. I've seen it and I know it. Hallelujah. It just need. When a man of God have a big need, you don't know him. Oh, uh, how will know him? You just follow me. Follow the Bible. Follow God. If, if you don't, if you follow them, they will deceive you. And there are many of them are duping Christians. You get heartbreak. They hurt you. You don't know that God is all confused. Unbelievers see what they are laughing at us. But unbelievers this morning, eh, you will be saved because God cares about you. If, you know, in, in every society, they will always buy people. So there are some bad people who have come in the church and wants to destroy the church. So don't be discouraged. Come and say, God, call it some good, they have some good pastors. And I'm one in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And there are many good ones out there. I can recommend you to them by the grace of God. Don't be discouraged. Look at their foot and you will know who they are. Saints, test the spirit. Don't just follow anything. So God says, Walking according to their own laws, I just they strap all they want, their own fame, me, 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 not God, none of people. Mm -hmm. What is the promise is coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For they were well for they forget that by the word of God, heavens were made and standing out of waters. Let me go to where I want to go. Um, verse 8. Second Peter 3, verse 8. But beloved, do not forget this one thing. That with the Lord one day is <laughs> as a thousand years. So don't think he's not coming. He's coming. He is coming. Hallelujah. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. As some kind slackness, but it's long suffering towards us. My letter Abahaya. Now waiting that anyone should repent, but that all should come to repentance. The reason why Jesus is delayed because God wants you. God wants you to turn to righteousness. God do not want you to go to hell. No. God wants you to repent and serve him and serve him well. That's why he's taking it one day at a time. God said he will judge disobedient. God means it. God said he's coming back for the holy church. God means it. God said he's coming back for those who will serve him well. God means it. God is not slack concerning his promises. If you have read the word of God before, you know that God is a God by his word. He never lies. The Bible says, but the spoken word, God spoke and thank you into existence. The God we serve, this Bible from ages, it has been tested. It has been proven right. That us contested this Bible. But if God says it, he will do it. Get your house in order. Jesus Christ is coming back and he wants you to turn to him pastor get your church in order if you are a fake prophet this god thing is not fake it is real stop using jesus name to blaspheme people to, to deceive people no he, uh, he is a good and holy god god is faithful to his promises i don't know what you have been believing the lord for Oh, I don't know what you have been struggling with in life. I come to encourage us this morning to let you know that God is sure concerning his promises. He said, I'm God. I change this night. I am not a man that I should lie. Not the son of man that I should repent. Whatever I said, I will do. So if God said, live holy. And because without holiness, you won't see your face. God means it. If God said, do right. Like I said this morning, God said, return from your wicked ways. Return from disobedience. Return from the things of this world and come to me. God is sure of his promises. 
Psalm 119, verse 89. The Bible said, Forever, oh God, your word is settled. In heaven, it is settled. God's word is settled concerning your life. Oh, believers, believers, by the grace of God, the Holy Ghost is doing a work in your life right now. I present to you a Jesus who cares about you. Like I said, what would you want to follow something you had to take care of? An idol. Or something you don't really have. You, you know, you're trying to figure out whether he exists or not. No. I have shown you this morning that Jesus Christ is not because I read it in the Bible. It's because I have my own encounter. I'm a living testimony that Jesus Christ is alive. So this morning, he's calling you back to himself. Don't be discouraged about what is happening around today. Think about your life. He woke you up this morning. Do you think you are so smart? No, you are not. The fact the whole of last week, you went to work in your car safely. Don't see me, you are the best driver. No. Because they are all us who begin this week, last week, and then make it home. But the law have you alive for the reason. Hallelujah. There are some sickness that you are battling with. All us only they have it only one. They are dead and gone. But the Lord is still sustaining you. He's saying, turn to me this morning. I'm bigger than that sickness. Go heal on Friday. And even running God is healing right now. If you open up. The God we serve, he's a good God. If you're a widow this morning listening to me, please, the Lord is your judge. The Lord is your judge. Hold on to the hands of Jesus. He's faithful. If you are single this morning and you feel lonely, oh, the Lord is near to you this morning. Open up to him and embrace his presence. If you are married this morning and you are confused in your home, oh, please. The Lord is the Prince of Peace. Don't give up on him. You may have been betrayed by people, by different things of life. I present Jesus Christ to you this morning. Maybe, like I talked about the false prophets, you have a bad experience about church. But please, Jesus Christ is still alive. Come back to him this morning. That's why you can sit in your home or wherever you are and hear the word of God. This morning, all you need to do, he said, get your house in order, get your life in order. It's to confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's all you need. And he's going to come in your life. The Holy Ghost is going to help you to overcome any addictions, any kind of sin, to help you daily to walk this life. Like I said, a little arrow can save you. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But Jesus can. That's why he said, I won't leave you orphan. When Jesus was about to leave the earth, and he told his disciples, I'm about to go. They became so sad. And they said, Lord, and he said, I will not leave you alone. I will send you a comforter. I will send you a helper. And that helper is available this morning to you. As he opened the Holy Spirit. He has been knocking on your heart. My daughter, my son, come to me. Whenever you feel that, that feeling of doing what is right, that's God. That's the Holy Spirit. Whenever you feel that conviction to do what is right, that's the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean how many times you made mistake. Like I said, my, the issue that the, the problem I go have with the church is when you are living or lifestyle or sin or sin and you don't want to change. Mistake God understands. The Bible says we have a high priest who can sympathize with us. Because the high priest was like you and I. He was tempted. He was abused. He was let down. But yesterday he did not sin. So he didn't know how something we are under pressure. And we blow it. But it doesn't mean it's a license to remain there. No. Rise up and hold on. And he will help you. So this morning the word of God has come to strengthen us. It has come to give us direction. As you begin your week this way, you come with a mindset. That wow, eternally matters. I can't take my life serious. Hallelujah. Please say this prayer with me this morning. The man of God is going to pray for you and declare some things upon your life this morning. But I beg you, please, accept Jesus this morning. Or maybe you have been playing, it is time to come back to the Lord. Or you pastor who have been faking, it is time to get it real. 
God loves you. That's why he's giving you another chance. And this may be the last one. You never know. But I pray you will submit to the word of God this morning. Please, my sister, unbelievers, believers, I know I have done, the Holy Ghost has done its part this morning. Please open unto God this morning and say, Lord Jesus, all you have to do be genuine about it. Be sincere about what you're about to say. It's not about the word, it's about your heart. And say, Lord, I'm sorry for all my sins. Please forgive me and wash me clean in your precious blood. You see, I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior. I choose to follow you. I choose to follow the narrow path. Please, Lord, write my name in the book of life. I will follow you all the days of my life. If you said that prayer from your heart this morning and you mean it, the Holy Ghost is right there to help you. Some of you are crying. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Ghost will help you. It's a daily walk. It is time now. Don't follow a man. Follow this right here, the Bible. You can download it on your phone. If you just got saved, contact us. We'll help you. We are here three days away. We are here Sunday at 10. We are here Thursday and Friday at 7 p.m. We got a prayer line. Monday to the Wednesday from 7 to 5. I mean, from 5 to 7. Come. We'll help you. Call us. Contact email us. It's not easy. But I pray for grace to run the race. If you are 40, there's someone this morning, you are, you are a young girl. And right now you are going through the deliverance. Because God showed me you this morning. And it's like too much has happened to you. And it's that you, it's that you flip, you change from one thing to another. But you are free this morning in the name of Jesus. I set you free this morning. You are freed. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Leave her alone. Last night is like something happened to you. You woke up. You start changing from one thing to another. That's a demonic spirit. I set you loose now in the name of Jesus. I seal your life. You belong to God. As you are open unto God, just say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. See Karadosha. Ha, ha, malatamo santo re kalosha. Hey, I release the blood of Jesus in your bed now. In the name of Jesus, I set you loose. By the power of the blood. Hey, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Those of you who are giving your life to Christ. I pray for grace to run the race. Grace to be consistent at all times in the things of God. Grace to seek God. Please find time to pray. Read your Bible, like I said. Find a good church where they tell you the truth. Where they tell you you matters to God. Your soul matters to God. They tell you about heaven and hell. They tell you about prosperity. They tell you about the whole thing of God. The Lord will see you through. I will now call the man of God. God's prophet to pray for us this morning and declare over your life. There's a brand new we you about to go through this week. Let him bless your heart this morning. Stay tuned for him. Come on, prophet. The Lord bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 What an awesome word this morning. Blessings, everybody. Uh, my name is Prophet Paul Wiese. I just want to share something with you here. Um, wow, what an awesome word this morning. One of God said something this morning that was so uh, profound that the word of God is settled. Yeah, those of you, if you study law, you understand something we call a, a black letter law or settled law. The word of God is just like that. It is so settled that it is not open for any reasonable dispute or amendment. Uh, I just want to bless your life this morning. The Bible says in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, that the king Jehoshaphat, his student said, Believe in the word of the Lord, and you shall stand firm, or be established. Believe in the word of the prophet, and you shall prosper. So to, in order to be established, you must believe in the word of God. In order to prosper, you must believe in the word of the prophet. 
So your prosperity is in the mouth of the prophet. Hallelujah, people of God. I want to also uh, read to you this morning from the book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 8. And from that, I will release some uh, declaration over your lives this morning. The Bible says here, Now there arose a new king over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal surely with them, lest they multiply and it happen in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us. And so, go up out of the land. Therefore, set up tax masters over them to suppress them. Hallelujah. People of God. You see, the Old Testament consists of typologies. Moses was a type of Old Testament Messiah. Joseph was a type of Old Testament Messiah. Hallelujah. Pharaoh was a type of Old Testament Satan. So we all know the story that Joseph was sold into captivity by his own household. But there was the divine hand of God that was sending him ahead of his people because famine was about to come at the time. Hallelujah. So after the, 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 the children of Israel enjoyed plenty, because the Pharaoh then knew Joseph, and you know the story how Joseph became the prime minister in Egypt. Hallelujah, people of God. But it was after the death of Joseph that the Bible says there came a new king, a new Pharaoh, Amen. who did not know Joseph. And therefore, because he saw the children of Israel became so prosperous and they were increasing in number, and therefore he told his people that they should suppress them. And if you read through that passage, you will come to understand that even as they suppressed the children of Israel, the more they became prosperous. Hallelujah. People yeah. of God, what is it that is holding you down? What Pharaoh that is holding you down? Is it financial stagnation? Is, is it sickness? Is it disease? What is holding you down? What is afflicting you? Is it, is, is it that people have been, are being intimidated because of the anointing, the prophetic that is upon your life, and they are intimidated? Some of you, you, you you've been in churches where you should be, your, your gift should be honored, but yet and still, because the, the, the so-called status quo, the religious establishment suppress you. But I have come to announce to you this morning, there is a messianic anointing that is upon your life. That is why the enemy had not been able to take you out. So this morning, people of God, I have come to declare unto you, to you that God Almighty has a hand in your life. And you are destined to reign. Few, few A months, few months back, 2000 and, uh, 2017 was in September. And I was in a vision. And as I was driving, I saw the first, I passed the first individual sick and had a was breathing from an oxygen tank and then i passed the first the second one and then i was gripped with that real that's that, that uh, 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 holy angle and i turned back to them and i did not touch them and i just began to pray for them and instantly they begin to heal and the spirit of the lord said son it won't be long that I don't have to touch you, people of God. All I have to do is to declare the infallible word of God, people of God. And just as Jehoshaphat said in, 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 in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, believe in the word of the prophet and you shall prosper. This morning I have come to announce to you that you are about to be delivered from every grave of the enemy. Amen. You are about to be set free from every satanic bondage. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I begin to release these words, people of God, as you believe it. As you believe it and you Amen. attach your faith. Just as the woman with the issue of blood, the Bible says that her resources were exhausted. And she heard that the Lord Jesus was passing by. And she said to herself, only if I will touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. People of God, that's faith. I want you to release your faith this hour. It is not by might. Don't look, don't look at me. I don't have to touch you. But if you believe this morning, as I make this declaration, you will receive your healing. Amen. For some of you, financial stagnation, you have been, oh my God, my God, my God. You are about to burst into a new season of overflow. Amen. You have been living below your limits. Amen. It is about time that you 
burst forth. Your territory will be expanded. This morning, I declare and decree. If you are sick, this morning, I release healing. There Amen. is a healing anointing that is available to you this morning. People of God, you have been down. Your head has been down. It's about time that your head will be lifted up high. Amen. That those who look down upon you shall be the ones to announce you. Amen. I declare and decree this morning. I stand under this prophetic grace. Ah, commission, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I release freedom, oh God, this morning. I, uh, your, oh my God, the word of God declares in Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17. It says, upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. People of God, when Jesus Christ died, he left us a gift of salvation and freedom. I impute that gift to you this morning. I impart that gift this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus I command every sickness, every spirit of of bondage and calamity ah, that, that that bothers you to leave this hour in the name, name of, of the Lord Jesus. Jesus. I declare peace, be still. Just as the Bible says in the book of Exodus, when the children of Israel left Egypt, the Bible says when they arrived at the Red Sea, when they looked back, they saw themselves being pursued by the Egyptians. They begin to panic and they said to Moses, Are there no graves in Egypt that you brought us here to die in the wilderness? The Bible says, And the prophet, the man of God, spoke these words. And he said, Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. People of God, whatever you are going through this season, Hallelujah. be it financial barrier, be it sickness, be it any torment from the pit of hell, I have come to announce to you that be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Our God is big. There is nothing that can outlast. Yes, there is God. nothing that can outdo yes, God. our God. Yes, this God. morning, as a prophet of God, I declare peace, be Amen. still. Amen. Peace, be still. Amen. Marriages, oh my God. You, 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 you may be going through marital turmoil right now. I declare freedom. Amen. I declare peace. Amen. I declare unity. Amen. I declare your, your, you and your husband shall be, shall be, shall cleanse together once more. Once Amen. more. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Ah, there's a lady with the eye tumor. I command that to disappear. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I rebuke HIV and AIDS this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I rebuke every lung cancer. Ah, my God, my God, my God, my God. My God, I practice. I command you to live Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, by the mention of this name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess yes, that God. He is Lord unto the glory of the Father. Yes, Jesus. People of God, there is freedom this morning. Yes, the anointing is available. If you will release your faith this morning, people of God, you are about to enter a new dimension, yes, a Lord. new realm of liberty and freedom and prosperity. Enjoy that which God has given you. Be blessed this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 You are blessed. Uh, if if, if uh, those of you who want to connect with us, you can you can see find us on the web. Go to www.divineguardiansusa.org. Uh, you can also give us a call at 404-844-1952. Thank you. God bless you. And we'll see you when we see you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Amen. God bless you all this morning. We are done. God bless you. If you are on the prayer line, we will be on the line tomorrow morning from 5 a.m. in the morning. Again, go on the west side. The information are there. Or go on my Facebook page. We have it all there. The Lord bless you. If not, I see you all on Thursday at 7 p.m. Again, go and get your house in order. The Lord bless you. And thank you so much for tuning in. Amen. Have an awesome week.